Hi, everyone. Good morning. It is Thursday, almost Friday, almost the weekend. Um, I had a staff meeting this morning, and so we were talking about um, all different kinds of things. Um, it was nice to see some of your faces yesterday when you came to pick up your stuff. And um, there's going to be another opportunity to pick up your things on Monday. So I'll get you that information as, um, as soon as I can go back and look and see at the times um, for you to be able to go by the school and pick up your stuff on Monday. If you didn't get to go to spot five people left in our class who haven't picked up their things yet. Um, what else? Tomorrow is the teacher parade. So I hope to see some of you at the parade tomorrow there at Gibson um, from 3.30 to 4.30, I think, or 3.30 to 4, something like that. can't really remember the exact time, but I will also post that information to give you the correct information. All right, last thing we read about, Ivan has decided that he is going to use words in his painting. He knows how powerful words are, and but we don't know what word he's going to paint yet. So let's read and see if we can find out. All right, next 10 pages. This next chapter is called H. I lay out 16 pieces of poster board, four down, four across, a perfect square. What are you up to, Bob demands. I'm guessing it doesn't involve sleep. It has to do with the billboard. That sign's a monstrosity, particularly since I'm not featured. I grab my bucket of red paint. You're not on the billboard because you're not in the show, I point out. Technically, I don't live here, Bob says with a sniff. I am homeless by choice. I know, I'm just saying. I study the billboard, then I make, then I make two fat lines like broom handles. Another fat line connects them. I stand back. What do you think? Here's what he made. Looks like a letter H. What is it? No, wait, let me guess. A ladder. Not a ladder, I say, a letter. At least I think that's what they're called. I have to make three more. Bob cuddles up next to not tag. Why, he asks. Because then I'll have a word, a very important word. I dip my fingers into the paint. What word, Bob asks. Home. Bob closes his eyes. That's not so important, he says quietly. This next chapter is called Nervous. All day long, I knuckle walk circles around my cage. I'm so nervous, I can't nap. I can't even eat. Well, not very much anyway. I'm ready to show Julia what I've made. It has to be Julia. She's an artist. Surely she'll look, truly look at my painting. She won't notice the smudges of tears. She won't care if the pieces don't quite fit together. She'll see past all of that. Surely Julia will see what I've imagined. I watch Ruby trudge sullenly through the four o'clock show, and I wonder what will happen if I fail. What if I can't make Julia understand? But of course, I know the answer. Nothing. Nothing will happen. Ruby will remain the main attraction at Exit 8 Big Top Mall and Video Arcade, conveniently located off I-95 with shows at 2, 4, and 7, 365 days a year, year after year after year. Ivan really wants to save Ruby. Next chapter, showing Julia. It's time to show my work. The mall is silent, except for Thelma the McCall, who is practicing a new phrase. Uh-oh. Julia is finishing her homework. George is sweeping outside. Mac has gone home for the night. I grab, not tag, and carefully pull out the folded papers. So many paintings, page after page, piece after piece, my giant puzzle. I pound on my glass and Julia glances over. Fingers trembling, I hold up one of my paintings. It's brown and green, a corner piece. Julia smiles. I display another picture and then another and another, each one a tiny part of a whole. Julia is confused. But what is it? She asks. She shrugs. It doesn't matter. It's pretty just as it is. 
Uh Uh-oh, says Thelma. No, I think. No, it does matter. (sighs) Last couple pages. More paintings. George calls out to Julia. He's done for the night. Grab your backpack, he says, and hurry, it's late. Gotta go, Ivan, Julia says. Julia doesn't understand. I have to find the right pieces. I dig through the pile. They're here somewhere. I know they are. I find one, another one, another. I try to hold four of them up against the glass. Bob, I say, help me, hurry. Bob grabs paintings with his teeth and drags them to me. One by one, I shove pictures through the window crack. They crumple and tear. There's too many pieces. My puzzle is too big. Careful, Ivan, Julia says. Those might be worth millions someday. You never know. She arranges the paintings into a neat stack. I suppose Mac's going to want to sell these in the gift shop. She still doesn't understand. I shove more out the hole and more and more, all of them one after another. So Ivan's been painting, has he, George says as he puts on his coat. A lot, says Julia with a laugh. A whole lot. You're not taking all those home with you, are you? George asks. I mean, no offense to Ivan, but they're just blobs. Julia thumbs through the towering stack of paintings. They might not be blobs to Ivan. Let's leave those by the office, George suggests. Mac will want to sell them. Although, why would anyone pay 40 bucks for a finger painting a two-year-old could do? I don't know. I like Ivan's work, Julia says. He puts his feelings into them. He puts his hair into them, George says. Julia waves goodbye. Night, Ivan. Night, Bob. I press my nose against the glass and watch her walk away. All my work, all my planning, wasted. I look at Ruby sleeping soundly and suddenly I know she'll never get to leave the big top mall. She'll be here forever, just like Stella. I can't let Ruby be another one and only. And that's it. So he thought Julia was going to understand what he was trying to do. And as of right now, she does it yet. I think because as a human, I don't think she believes that Ivan's actually trying to do something. She just thinks that he's painting, that he's just a mindless animal who's just kind of doing whatever his master is telling him to do. All right, I wanted to show you guys how much we have left to read because it's not that much. This is it. This is all we have left to read. Just this little stack right here. We're almost done with this book. And I can't wait to see what happens. I'm very excited about it. All right, so vocabulary. We have dismay. We have two words. We have dismay, which means distress. And we have towering, which means high, tall. So like a towering tree or towering building. Dismay, you may feel dismay. You may feel distressed. Uh, Dismay is a feeling. So those are our two vocabulary words. I want you to think, what is going to happen now? What is Julia going to do with those paintings? Are they going to let Max sell them? Are they just going to leave them there by his office so you can try to make more money off of him? Maybe she goes home and looks at the paintings and figures it out because Ivan believes she'll get it because she's an artist too. I don't know. So many questions. I can't wait to read tomorrow's 10 pages. So um, I will see you guys tonight at the Zoom meeting. We're going to look at our animal research circle map, and we're going to look at the zoo animal math problems, and then we'll talk about our plans for next week. All right, so I'll see you guys tonight at 6 o'clock, and I'll be posting all the Zoom meeting info in Dojo. So I'll see you guys later. Bye.